Jennifer Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is comparison. And uh, we're going to have a look at how we compare ourselves to others and our lives to others and, and how we can sort of bring, bring back our um, attention to the perfection of our own lives. So before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present and, and centered. And let's just take a deep breath in through your nose, hold it and imagine clean, crisp oxygen, pure oxygen, just flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing your cells and all your organs and bringing vital life force. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time imagine sparkling white, brilliant light, energizing and electrifying your molecules and your electrons and brightening and enlivening and electrifying you. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any stress. And now let's just gently press our palms together and really softly just rub your fingers against your palms and feel how soft and tingly and tickling that sensation is and allow yourself to become present right here right now so welcome welcome i'm so glad to be here with you um i i notice that so many people fall into a um, mode of comparing themselves to others. And good morning, Irma. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about comparing our lives and ourselves to other people and their lives. And, and my experience of, of um, people in general is that when we compare ourselves to others, we are comparing ourselves to a fantasy typically, like we imagine <laughs> comparison queen here, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, so what we get to do is to stop doing that and, and to recognize that, um, you know, a lot of a lot of the stories we make up about other people's lives are just that they're stories and we often imagine other, you know, the perfection of other people's lives. Uh, to be something that um, that ex exceeds our our situation or our lives, and um, you know, uh, except for material things that we might be able to observe, uh, you know, where people are richer or people have more things or a different, a better car or, you know, these these kind. Good morning, Dido. Welcome, welcome. So uh, we're talking about comparison. So in terms of other people's lives, like we can look at our own life and say, oh my gosh, I'm miserable. I, you know, I have such challenges with this. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, this is founded so looking like <laughs> Lord Voldemort. Yes, that's me, Lord Voldemort here with no hair. Um, somebody chiming in from uh, Periscope, I guess. Anyway, um, when, we, when we compare ourselves to others, what we're doing really is extending judgment of ourselves because a comparison is, is really a judgment, right? So if I'm saying uh, you have more than I do. Typically, anyway, these comparisons are, are, are bonded with judgment. You know, it's not just an observation. Uh, it's there, especially when we're comparing our lives to other people. Um, we're either seeing ourselves as better or less than um, the other person and typically will say, I'm so, I'm so depressed and they're so happy, for instance, or um, I'm, I'm nowhere near as smart as that other person or 
these you get the idea of what we're doing there is we're judging ourselves and in that judgment one of the what we're fundamentally doing is is relating to our life as insufficient or not perfect for ourselves um, so Christina says, this seems to come up for me less now than in my past, but still working on it. You're right. Usually comparisons are quite unrealistic, right? So we can look at the neighbor who looks like they have the perfect life. In fact, I remember this from high school. There was a family, you know, my, my parents, my family was pretty rife with fighting growing up and and um, it was my parents' relationship was nowhere harmonious at all. And I remember having a friend in high school where I'd visit and it seemed like they had the perfect family. And then out of nowhere, they decided that they were going to get a divorce. And the kids were shocked. The, the kids were just bowled over because it came out of nowhere for them too. Um, so the the, the uh, parents had done an exceptional job of hiding whatever whatever their discord was, and so you know the our observations of others are typically our imaginings about what their lives are you know here i thought they had the perfect life and uh, apparently not and um in fact i think they got divorced before my parents did which is really interesting anyway um the the antidote i think to this comparison thing is to find a way to embrace our own lives as perfect for us. And this goes back to uh, something that I've said over and over. And, and, you know, it's always good to remember this vantage point. If I choose to believe that life is happening for me and through me rather than to me, if life is happening for me, then I have, I have somehow been in receipt of the gifts of my life, including the challenges of it. Now, another piece of this that really has made, created a context for life that has really served me is to take on the belief or the hypothesis that I chose this life, that I chose the circumstances of my life because I wanted to experience it. You know, so let's, let's imagine that we are consciousness and that we get to choose the life that we step into. And I, I also imagine this life as a movie. So sometimes we go to horror movies because we want the thrill of it. Sometimes we go to, to um, movies that, are, that have all kinds of tragedy and, and, and triumph in them. Um, and we get enrolled in the story in that movie. And if we can see our lives in that way, where we have chosen our challenges as, as extreme as they may be, you know, if we look at it in terms of many lives, perhaps, or many movies or many dimensions, then um, we, we play these roles in these lives and, and we immerse ourselves in the belief in their reality, right? In, and we really, good morning, Danette, welcome. We really um, experience 
the suffering and the challenge and the triumph and the difficulty and the and we wear it as a burden uh, rather than a gift and uh, we talked last week about life as a sacred pilgrimage you know there are all kinds of contexts that we can create for our experience of life that are empowering you know rather than than feeling like we're condemned to our lives which i have to admit you know there were, were many years of my life where i really did feel like i I was serving a sentence, like I was being punished. And um, switching from that perspective to a perspective of what is there to learn here? What can I learn here? How can I grow? What, you know, how can I um, benefit from this, this challenge that I'm experiencing or, um, you know, even even just appreciating the sensations of living and sometimes those sensations are painful and sometimes there's deep suffering um uh, I, I'm using the word suffering, and it's it's bringing to mind um, the fact that we can experience pain without suffering, because I think that suffering is a commentary. Uh, suffering is a commentary on our situation. So if I am going through a period of sorrow, I can be in deep sorrow and engaged fully in that experience. The suffering arises when I am resisting it and wanting it to be other than it is. Does, you know, just uh, Elaine says, humanity is an, is an expression of loving grace in the now. Well, it certainly can be, Elaine. That's beautiful. And um, so much of that experience of, of grace and experience of the now is in embracing our lives. So when we this this whole conversation arises out of the notion of comparison so we could be looking at another person and saying wow they have such an easy life or they're so happy or they're so um they're so uh successful and look at me i'm not you know so if we if we bring ourselves back to I am really successful at doing my life and I've chosen a different life than they've chosen. When we elevate ourselves into the place of choice and ownership, then I believe that the, the suffering can assuage to a great degree. So Irma says, suffering is an option. I, I heard how to keep it out of my heart. Yes. Yeah, so how do we, how do we not experience the suffering? I mean, I, I have gone through years of depression in my life, like the greater part of my life, the, the bigger part of my life in terms of time was spent in lots and lots of deep darkness and deep suffering. And um, I think that the suffering is not so much in our hearts as it is in our minds. So 
it's the commentary. It's like, because I can be sad and I can feel down and it's my mind saying, I really want something else. And I understand that. I mean, because it is just like, oh, when is this going to end? Right. And, and I get that. I get that. And one way that we can minimize our suffering is to recognize the, the small steps. So there's, if we were, if we were climbing a mountain, if we just looked at the peak of the mountain, it would feel so overwhelming that we might just despair and say, forget it, I'm not even going to try. However, if we look at right in front of us, if we look right one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, and, and we see the, the, the smaller goals, you know, it's like, let's just get to that rock and let's get to the next rock. And then periodically, if we were to look at the top of the mountain, we might notice that we're a little closer and a little closer and a little closer. And so I believe that there is the, the way to um, keep the suffering out of our hearts is first to, I mean, if we're going to be in our heads to recognize even the smallest wins, you know, to recognize, wow, today I noticed that I felt okay a couple times during the day. Um, so Irma says, wow, powerful info, learning to be present in each step and celebrate each one. That's what I get to do. Exactly, exactly, Irma, because it's, it, we typically, the way that we change and evolve is incremental. You know, it doesn't typically happen overnight. It doesn't typically happen where we have one moment and it changes us forever. Uh, sometimes that kind of radical change can happen, but it's not the way most of us grow and evolve through life. Elaine says, suffering comes from mis misinterpreting growing pains in the allowance of feelings without judgment set ourselves free of all beliefs that fear is real. Yes, you are right on. Love is a process in the now. So suffering comes from misinterpreting growing pains in the allowance of feelings without judgment. And Elaine, you're, you're actually speaking beautifully of, of the key is to allow our experience without the judgment of it. So, so often when we feel sad, we, we somehow decide and judge that we should be feeling something else or that we're, that we're wrong or bad for feeling sad. Or if, you know, here we are being on a path of evolution and if we get angry, then we beat ourselves up for being angry rather than recognizing that experience as as a gift of information. So as we can neutralize judgment, then that also will relieve suffering. And the key truly, truly is in, in moving out of these patterns, because they are patterns, they're physiological chemical patterns, and they're mental patterns, and they are, they are experiential patterns as well. And um, so to move out of these patterns, it's often an incremental path. And celebrating our wins step by step is... is what allows us to collect evidence that there's another, another way or another truth that we can embrace. 
So another part of what Elaine says is set ourselves free from all beliefs that fear is real. And so when we talk about fear, um, I've heard this uh, as an acronym, false evidence appearing real. Uh, we manufacture uh, fear. You know, fear is actually often a, a, um, an unconscious response to, to something that's unfamiliar or unknown. We can take it as information. We can say, oh, I'm, I'm feeling fear. What's going on? It makes us pay attention. It brings us to awareness um, unless we get caught in it. And being caught in it is, is something that um, also results from projections. You know, like if we, if we see a bear and we get frightened, it brings us to awareness to pay attention. And if we stay fearful, we then have probably a diminished capacity for, for um, a response that's going to serve us. So we can, we can start patterning these moments of awakening or attention into bringing ourselves into greater presence and awareness. So as we notice that we're suffering, for instance, we can, when we notice, we can use that moment to be a reminder to get present. We can use that moment as a reminder to look for the things that are wins. You know, to look also for things for which we can be grateful. And when I say things, I mean, experiences or or perceptions or awarenesses and so elaine says absolutely celebrating the rebirthing process and that's also a really beautiful point is that we get to be reborn in each moment so uh, this is this is a really really important concept is that i do i can rebirth myself, I can re-choose, I can choose again in any moment where I choose to put my attention, what I, how I choose to behave. You know, we get to reset again and again and again as we are learning new patterns and new behaviors. And rather than saying, um, particularly with, with comparison, uh, is I was going to say particularly with judgment, you know, when we recognize that we're judging, we get to choose again. Um, when we recognize that we're comparing, one of the things that we could do that would probably be quite illuminating and helpful is to recognize what's the judgment I'm making of myself as I make that comparison. So I'm <clears throat> making a comparison with somebody else saying their life is so much better than mine because whatever. And so we get to look at what is the judgment I have of myself that, that now perhaps I can heal and I get to choose now, as I notice that judgment, how to recraft my story. So Irma says, it's a challenge for me to celebrate, see my wins, be grateful. Feels like I need a personal companion to keep on telling me to choose celebrating, not fear or judgment, judging. Yes, yeah, so... Um, there are ways that we can help ourselves with a constant companion, you know, like we can set a timer for every five minutes, or maybe as we get better at it, maybe every 10 minutes and maybe every 20 minutes or whatever, 
to remember to celebrate and to even, I mean, it may be a challenge to look for the things to celebrate, but the thing, and, and that is only because we are not acclimated to that mindset. It's a new muscle. It's like when you when you're learning to play an instrument or you're learning a language or you're learning anything, it takes practice. And so the more diligently we're able to practice, the more likely or we are to see a result. So celebrating can be, wow, I just, I just, um, time flew by and I was unaware of it, you know, or I, I, I realized that I wasn't feeling miserable <laughs> or I, um, I'm celebrating that I'm still going, you know, or I am celebrating, remembering to celebrate. I mean, there are, we, we can get super granular, but it is a muscle and it takes practice. So whatever we can find to celebrate, or we can look at, oh my gosh, look at where I am now from when I was five days ago or a year ago. I mean, not all of us have forward progression. So in some cases, maybe we feel like we are not in a better place than we were a year ago. And in those cases, then we can say, look at where we are now. Look at where we are now and how we're climbing back or how we're, we're rearranging our, our thoughts and our awarenesses. And, and we can celebrate an insight. We can celebrate we can celebrate anything. We can celebrate just being, you know, and, and that kind of practice is, is really, really powerful. Christina says, I started setting my phone alarm to remind me three times a day to stop and be grateful. It truly helped. And, and I know, you know, we, we start habits and then we stop habits and some habits help and then we fall off. And then, so we get to reset and start doing it again. Instead of making ourselves wrong for falling off the habit, we get to start over again. And so to get back around to the, con the, uh, the topic of comparison, First off, most of our comparisons are based on imagined, uh, imagined circumstances for the other, right? Saying that person is better or for whatever reasons, or they have a better life or whatever. Um, recognize that, that these comparisons are steeped in self-judgment. And so we get to look at how we're judging ourselves and rather than making ourselves wrong for judging ourselves, notice and recalibrate. And another place of, of wholeness that we can come to from to move out of comparison is to possibly embrace the idea that we chose our lives um, before we got here because we wanted the richness of the experience of our lives, of that depth of emotion, that depth of, of experience and, and potentially the wisdom that arises from those deep times of, of self um, reflection and, and even the suffering to come through the suffering to the other side, you know, there's, there's a richness in it. And even, even being stuck in the suffering, uh, there is, there is a richness to that experience. And it is a way that so many of us have 
experience the the intensity of life. I mean, people know they're alive when they're in pain. And this too is a pattern that perhaps we can get addicted to is, is experiencing that I'm alive because it hurts. And what we can re-educate ourselves to is that I can experience being alive in joy. I can experience being alive in, in, um, in experiencing love, in experiencing beauty, in experiencing presence. And, and so that's a whole other topic I think would be really rich to explore together is how we how we experience life and and um, create friction or or challenge for ourselves often because that's what we know and that's how we know we're alive but anyway back to comparison uh, let's let's bring ourselves present to ourselves and as we free ourselves from judgment the comparison falls away as we accept our lives, as we embrace our own lives as our own, as our own path, then, then the comparison falls away. As we release our judgment, comparison falls away. And then we can celebrate other people's bounty without making it about me not having what they have or or me not um experiencing what they experience right so when when we become more present in our own skin and and more accepting of our own skin then we have more space to be to be um supportive and and to celebrate others it, celebrations with them so um elaine says gratitude is a beautiful expression of self-love you know that's a beautiful way to put it elaine i haven't heard it that way but i agree because when we experience gratitude we come to a place within of experiencing love and that's a gift to ourselves so um, elaine says pain and fear is a beautiful way to call ourselves home to the heart and go within exactly it's something that can we can use as a way to refocus and and bring ourselves back uh, to awareness and um Thank you, Elaine. Uh, so we get we get to love our lives. We get to love our lives, and I know that that may be may sound crazy, especially if you're going through a difficult and painful time. Um, that, that there is a sweetness to despair. And, and I know that, that, you know, I hope that hearing that doesn't make you feel angry um, or to, the, you know, to the idea of we get to love our lives. Um, even when we hate our lives. Okay, so that, you know, there are, there are times in our lives when it just is like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm stuck in somebody else's life. And when we take ownership of our lives and take, take the wheel, so to speak, you know, by taking ownership of our lives, we are then recognizing that it is within our power to change it. And, um, it's also in our power to embrace it and experience it. So it, it, gets, it gets thorny 
Um, I, I don't want to be speaking what sounds like platitudes. Uh, coming to a place of presence in our lives is, is where we get to make the shifts and the evolutions and the growth and we get to recognize our little steps. Our, 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 to get through the day, I know that getting through the day is a deep, deep challenge for many people. I know that, I've been there. And I know that just one foot in front of the other was all I could manage. And if that's where you are, then you get to celebrate each time you take a step. And you get to celebrate each time you realize that you need to rest from taking those steps. And you get to celebrate every portion of the journey. You know, um, and it may sound crazy, but even you get to celebrate feeling the depth of the feeling that you feel. So all of this, as we become more present to our own lives as our gift to ourselves. It can help to shift our perspective and shift us away from the need to compare. Because perhaps all, uh, all those things that we're comparing ourselves to are our projections and they're not really real. They're, they're something that we are projecting forward and we get to come back to this, to ourselves. So I wanna say thank you everyone for being here with me and for engaging in this conversation as always and Elaine thank you uh, thank you Elaine says thank you for sharing love grateful for sharing this now with all of you grace and I'm grateful for sharing this with all of you and and for your engagement and it means everything and uh, we're here to support each other and to find our way through and and um and into, right, into greater depth. So lots and lots of love to all of you. Irma says, loved it. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And yes, thank you to all of you for being here. It's It's been such a gift to me. And Andrea says, thank you. Danette says, thank you so much. Very eye-opening. Eye Everybody have a good day from Danette and from me and, um, I'm Mira Rubin. This is the Core Connection, and I show up here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page every weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And I hope to see you again here soon. And please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network. Lots and lots of love.